How to Stop Worrying About Money in the Future In this video we will examine some of the most common reasons that make people worry about money. We will also explore the concept of fear itself and the reasons behind it, as well as the, the freedom that comes out of concentrating upon the present moment. Finally, we will show you how a few mental tricks can help you to stop worrying about money in the future. Watch this video until the end to get a bulletproof plan to reduce your financial worries, by implementing some very smart and sound measures that can change your life, starting tomorrow. Okay, let's start the video. Fear about lack of money is actually known as one of the most common fears people face in their lifetime. Financial crises are not a new phenomenon. They have been happening for centuries and they will continue to happen in the future. But the way you deal with the issue, and the negative thought patterns that come along with it, are not a necessary evil or part of life. You could very well be in perfect serenity amidst the chaos and turmoil. You just need to make a conscious choice to do so. And to do that, watch this video until the end to discover some very simple tricks and methods. If you find yourself worrying to death about money, and about your financial future, then you should know you're not alone. In fact, money is a messy issue for many people. You might think you're just bad at it, but you're just a few steps away from solving your mental anguish about money and finances. But before we proceed to the specific tips, if you find such content helpful, we'd love to hear your thought in the comment section. Tell us what you love, and some creative ways to stop worrying about money in the future that you came up with. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more great videos. Thank you. Let's begin looking at the problem of money worries. The question we need to ask ourselves is simple. Why do we worry so much about money and let finances ruin our lives? It's safe to say, we worry about money because we want to protect what we have, and give ourselves a better future. In the end, we are fearful of not having enough money. Broadly speaking, this can lead to living in fear of the future, being unable to enjoy the present, and not being able to make decisions for fear of making the wrong one. Money can also be seen as a symbol of power and success. We associate wealth with happiness, which is not always true. Money is just one aspect of our lives that needs to be balanced with other aspects such as health, family, friends, and work-life balance. This fear manifests in many forms. For example, 1. We worry about our financial stability. We worry that we won't be able to pay our bills, get medical attention, or afford food. A startling stat shows that one in three Americans lives from paycheck to paycheck. Unfortunately, this includes the middle class. The New York Times reports that this is not just the poorest Americans, but also those who are struggling with making their monthly mortgage payments, getting their kids to school, and meeting all of their other obligations. Point 2. We worry that we'll have to work forever. We also fear that we won't ever be able to retire because we don't earn enough or have saved enough for retirement. Many people are afraid that their nest egg just won't suffice. They might not make enough money or have enough money saved up for retirement. It's really hard to save for retirement when there are so many other financial priorities in life, like paying the bills and providing for your family. No wonder many people stay up at night, picturing their old age and trying to picture a way in which they can retire with grace. No matter what age you are, the thought of retirement can be overwhelming. We all want to retire someday, but most people don't think they can afford it until they're much older. 3. We worry that our children won't have a good life. Another reason people worry about money in the future relates to parenthood. People fret over whether or not their children will be able to afford to go to college, find high-paying jobs, and live comfortably. So, to conclude this part, the unknown worries that we have about our future usually fall into one of these categories we mentioned earlier in this video. 1. Our worries that we won't be able to afford the things we need, like healthcare, food, and a retirement fund, too. Our fears that our children won't live a happy life and will have a difficult time growing up, 3. Our worries about the future and the state of our world. Now, after we have identified the problem, let's break down possible solutions. The first thing to consider is that we are currently in the midst of a technology revolution, and this is not the first one. The Industrial Revolution, for example, changed everything about society and the way people lived their lives. But it didn't happen overnight. It took decades of changes before life was unrecognizable from what it had been before. And that brings us to another point. If we look at history, we see that revolutions don't always have a negative impact on society. In fact, some of them have been hugely beneficial for those living in them at the time and for those who lived through them afterwards, too. 
But what does this mean for our future? What does it mean for our children? What does it mean for our jobs? Will AI take our roles in the workforce? It's hard to predict what the future of AI holds, but many people are worried that AI could take over human jobs in the future. This is not to say that so-called bad things cannot happen. Yet, the decision whether we should get all worked up about it or not is still in our realm of choice. You can just say, let life throw whatever it may at me, I will prevail. Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that emphasizes the idea that people should have control over their fate and not be subject to external events. Stoicism was founded by Zeno of Citium and later became one of the most influential schools of thought in the ancient world. Stoic philosophy focuses on the idea that people should have control over their fate and not be subject to external events. As the Emperor Marcus Aurelius said, what stands in the way, becomes the way. In addition, Stoic thinkers are noted for their belief in self-control and their rejection of emotions as reactions to external events. They did not rely on wealth or money to be happy, but rather depend on their virtue. Instead of seeking security in external things, Stoics strive to become better people by following certain philosophies and disciplines that challenge the individuals. Mental Stamina It is pointless to be upset about things that we can't control, like the weather or the current state of the economy or the stock market. Stoics believe that every event would either help or harm a person and it's our duty to react accordingly. Some of the Stoics' other values include living a life free of fear and anxiety, practicing acceptance in the face of change, and appreciating one's natural surroundings. The Stoics often looked to nature as an analogy for one's own life, and considered it a source of wisdom. They thought that the natural world is composed of various types of elements, which can teach us how to live a good life. For example, they would say that fire is hot because it moves from place to place, air is dry because it cannot hold on to water, and earth is hard because it resists being pulled apart. We strongly urge you to study more about Stoicism, as it contains valuable riches when it comes to dealing with worry about money in your future. But besides embracing a new life philosophy, which is imperative in order to rid yourself of needless stress and worry, we also want to provide you with some actionable things you can start doing starting today. Here are some ideas that may help you stop worrying about money in the future. 1. Thinking about the future will not make it any better, the present is all that matters. To think about what the future holds and what one can do to affect it, is to rob ourselves of the opportunity to live in the present. To quote the Roman philosopher, Seneca, True happiness is to enjoy the present, without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not." End quote. In the end, all that matters is that which we can do at present, and not what may happen in an unknown future that will never materialize anyway. The future is something that we can never predict. It is ever-changing, and even if it does happen to repeat what has happened before, the circumstances are different anyway. Even if you plan everything to the smallest detail, there are still too many variables that you cannot account for. Which is why it's important to focus on what is present in front of us, and not dwell on the past or fear the future. The future is a thing that we need to accept, it is out of our reach. Bad things may happen, but they may also be controlled or mitigated. No one knows what the tomorrow brings. It is, then, sufficient to enjoy the present and let things come as they are. So instead of incessantly worrying about the future in vain, focus on the present moment. In his letter, On Groundless Fears, Seneca reminds us of the futility of foreseeing trouble before it faces us. And I quote, There are more things, likely to frighten us than there are to crush us. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. What I advise you to do is, not to be unhappy before the crisis comes, since it may be that the dangers before which you paled as if they were threatening you, will never come upon you. They certainly have not yet come. Accordingly, some things torment us more than they ought, some torment us before they ought, and some torment us when they ought not to torment us at all. We are in the habit of exaggerating, or imagining, or anticipating, sorrow. We can also summon what Professor Dan Gilbert calls, synthetic happiness, to our aid. It is our shield in case things do turn out for the worse. This is a term that refers to happiness that we manufacture when our backs are against the wall and have no real choice. It basically says that when circumstances are not favorable, and after you lose what you want or get what you didn't want, your level of happiness will still reset to its base level. Our mind has the brilliant ability to create synthetic happiness by accustomizing us to any event or circumstance. 
You just need to let time pass, and you will find that you're slowly becoming happier with whatever life throws at you. Isn't that a great comfort to know that intrinsic happiness always follows external disappointment? This alone should cheer you up when you're worried to death about money or your future. Our mind is our greatest gift. Learn to stay calm like the Stoics advise you, and let time foster some manufactured happiness. There's no use of worrying yourself to death, especially when there are so many solutions at hand. That's not to say you cannot aim to improve the situation. You are still encouraged to work towards your goal. Just don't stress yourself to death trying to make sure everything turns out perfectly. 2. Worrying takes up mental space. Think about it. If you're constantly worrying about something, you have less mental space to think of other things. For example, if you're constantly worrying about what your boss thinks of you, then it's going to be hard for your brain to focus on anything else. Epictetus, who was a slave turned into a philosopher, teaches us the following, and I quote, the chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself with their externals, not under my control, and which have to do with the choice I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil, not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. End quote. As we already covered in the previous step, if you worry too much, you can't focus on the present moment and end up missing out on a lot of life's joys. When you're not able to focus on the present, your mind can't be fully at ease and you can't enjoy what's happening in front of your eyes. If you're feeling anxious and stressed out all of the time, it's going to be hard for you to actually have a good time with your friends and family. The same goes for if you feel like your mind is racing all day and you're never really able to focus on anything. It may be hard for you to want to do fun things or go out with people when you're feeling this way, because it's hard for them to compete with how stressed out and tired you feel. Many studies have shown that spending time in nature is a great way for people who are feeling overwhelmed to take a break from the stress. If you're too stressed to enjoy nature, try going to a museum or just looking at photos online of beautiful parks and beaches. The last step is acknowledgement of the situation. This is when you admit that there are problems with your life and then accept what it means for the present and future. The goal here is to be more aware of what's going on and more confident about finding a way out. 3. Worrying leads to ignoring opportunities that could prevent problems in the future. It's better to face a so-called potential problem, head-on, and think of ways to reduce its impact on your life, than to ignore it completely as if sticking your head in the sand makes it vanish. Ignoring a problem will only lead to more problems in the future. This is because when you ignore a problem, it continues to grow and will eventually hit you hard in the face. The best way to deal with any potential problem is to evaluate its seriousness and then address it as soon as possible before it gets worse. Take for example, a leaky faucet. If you ignore the leak for weeks or months, eventually the water will become a trickle and then stop completely. This means that the longer you wait, the more significant the problem will become. You can quickly fix a leaky faucet by simply turning off the water, or you can address it much more slowly by hiring a plumber to make repairs. 4. Maintain a positive attitude towards your future. The next step to overcoming your fear is to identify the cause of your fear. In order to overcome fear, it is important that you start taking proactive steps in your life and not let your fears dictate how you live. You should not let your fears lead you into dangerous outcomes such as aggression, anxiety, and being too withdrawn. Fear can also be an appropriate response to danger. When you think you are in a dangerous situation, then your mind creates fear. This knee-jerk reaction to stressful situations is meant to tell you when something is wrong or harmful. But our mind isn't great at evaluating imaginary events. We are exaggerating the chances of a certain result, its impact on us, and our ability to cope with it if it ever comes. A major tenet of Buddhism is metta, which literally means, loving-kindness. It's more than just a phrase, it's a philosophy that Buddhists strive to live by. In Buddhism, Thoughts are considered karma because they have the power to create or destroy happiness. The thought of, I want this, can create an attachment, but that attachment can also result in a craving that leads to negative emotions. Remember, you are strong. Your mind is fearful in order to save you from real dangers. But you need to stop and see reality for what it is. Money issues will not kill you. You will make it. People like you have lost money in the past and led a full life afterwards. You are no different you will rise after a fall. So think and focus on your incredible, innate ability to handle anything, and the blow will seem less fearful to you. 
5. Learn to enjoy life as it happens. In order to enjoy life in full, you need to be mindful of your thoughts and emotions. We are often consumed by the past or worried about the future when we should be living in the moment. In order to learn from your experiences, you need to reflect on them. Reflecting on what has happened is a way of learning from it and understanding how it has shaped us. Mindfulness is the act of focusing on the here and now. When you're mindful, your thoughts are in the present moment and not focused on anything else. But how can you be mindful in all aspects of your life? This video cannot go in depth into every aspect of mindfulness meditation, but we will provide some simple tips on how you can improve your mindfulness and reflection skills. 1. Practice mindfulness in your daily life. Put every thought on paper and think how you could improve your tomorrow. 2. Meditate for 10 to 20 minutes a day. You don't have to go to Thailand or become a Zen monk to meditate. Just go to a quiet place, sit comfortable, and close your eyes. Breathe slowly. Let your thought pass you by. See them as they come and go. Detach. Be like water, and let everything flow. 3. Take a break from your current situation. On your next break at work or school, head outside for some fresh air instead of using your phone or laptop. 4. Reflect on past experiences with the intention of learning from them. You might not be able to do this now, but when you're trying to get into mindfulness practice, sitting down and breathing is a good start. So, after we covered all of the steps in this video, you should sleep better. Starting tonight, whether it is a recession or an economic depression, there are some things that you can do right now, to make sure that you stay calm and composed. First of all, be thankful for what you have. You should know that there are many people out there who have less than you. Just because the economy is in a free fall doesn't mean that things should be difficult for you all the time. Next, scale back your spending if need be. If you don't really need something right now, don't buy it. Lastly, find a new hobby. Some downtime is always beneficial to clear your head and find new creative solutions. On the same note, if you want to give up some of your luxuries, consider making a donation to a charity in need. Nothing makes you feel better than helping others in need. You could also think about giving up some of your material possessions and living somewhere with less clutter, more open space and less upkeep costs. There's a good saying, the things you own, end up owning you. Let's say you did all that, and still worry to death. What else can you do? We know that money affects your happiness. It seems like a no-brainer to get rid of the anxiety and worries about finances. And it doesn't require a lot of work or effort, just a few simple steps. First, be aware of your financial progress and take responsibility for bringing in more income. Second, make sure you have enough cash flow to cover your expenditures and expenses in advance, so that you are not relying on credit cards or loans. Third, Stop worrying about money as much as possible by reducing spending on useless things, and focusing on investments instead. In addition, you can also do the following things to really hone in on your financial situation. 1. Get organized. The first practical step to help you to stop worrying about money is to get your finances in order. Make sure that you have a budget for the month and that you are sticking to it. It is important to know how much money you have coming in and how much money you need for the month. Two protect the fort. The second step is to start building an emergency fund. You should save at least three to six months of living expenses in case something happens with your job or your income drops for some reason. In addition, learn new skills. Invest in yourself. Start a side hustle. Go on Fiverr and offer some freelance services on the side. You never know when you'll need additional income. 3. Save whatever you can, starting today. The third step is to start saving for retirement. This can be done through a 401k or Roth IRA account which will help build up a nest egg for when you retire. We really hope this video helped you out in reducing your worry about money. If you enjoyed it, please like this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel. We post a few videos each week. Please feel free to write us in the comment section of this video, and we'll respond as quickly as we can. Also, we'd love to get your suggestions on new video ideas. So that's it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.